Oh. Wow. <laughs> did I just do one thing in the first half? Half time I did. Half time you did. Oh, it doesn't count when the clock's talking. Yeah. I got you. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I got a little uptight about half time, and that was it. That was easy. <laughs> that was nothing. Uh, your team seemed to really respond to the big hit. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I was excited about. That it was like, okay, like the first half felt like a boxing match. Like, you know, again, and we talk about Arturo Gotti and Mickey Ward, felt like, you know, the way Gotti wanted to go those first couple rounds. And all of a sudden that hit, which obviously was a really nice hit by Notre Dame. It shouldn't have been a penalty, but it said, all right, now we're brawling. And uh, the way we responded, got some transition going from it, created like a tempo that we like. You know, um, and so yeah, it, it sparked us and it got got us going that sort of helter skelter that we enjoy. And tell me, just the, the starting lineup, and I know it's senior day. Yeah, you're playing the number one team in the country. <laughs> a lot of faith in Petey to win that draw. Or? It's it's you know it's something we do. Uh, I've been doing it for years, uh, starting back as a Stony Brook coach. Um, it gets a little more attention. You're right when you're on uh, <laughs> national TV playing number one team in the country. Um, you know this. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot at stake, but again, this is what we do. This is our tradition. You reward the men, you know, and find a spot for them. And um, you know, Dave Rizzo makes if he's going to make a save, he's going to make the save and, and step up for it. I, I remember in 2015, I was at Brown. We were playing Cornell, and it was a big game. Like we needed to win that game. And Sean Curran was his first year with me. And he's like, "We're really doing this, huh? We're really doing this, coach. Like, this is what we do. You know, this is what we honor." And um, um, we've been fortunate to, uh, to, win, to win those games and, and to get off to a good start today. Well, Lars, the, the work that Nunes gave you today, just how yeah. encouraging is that for him to have a game where he probably stole a few? He did. He, he stole a bunch, too. Yeah. You know, especially in that fourth quarter where you know, they come down and get the, uh, the faceoff guy scores a goal. And now the pole's running in 15 seconds later. You know, and that could have been a huge momentum goal. And he makes that save. But, yeah, I, I just – it was it was really impressive what he's doing. And his, his run has really started the first time we played Notre Dame. Going into the Notre Dame game, we were a little unsure. And, and since then, he is seeing the ball really well. And Kirby Turner is doing a fantastic job with him. But to me, uh, you know, it was certainly the defense, the, what, what we did in front. Mm -hmm. We were physical. We were chippy. You know, there weren't a lot of hands-free step-down shots. You know, every time 13 touched the ball – you know, he doesn't need much time, but we were just getting to him, just just checking number eight before. So I was really happy with our short stick team he play, and certainly Kate and Cole. What those two can do to the Kavanaugh brothers, nobody can do that, you know, and uh, they, they still get their points. I get that, but, you know, to neutralize them, what Kate and Cole do, they're simply some of the best cover defenders in the game. Along those lines, how hard is it to keep them from getting looks inside of five yards as well as you guys did for most of them? I know, because, you know, 13 is so dangerous in there. And, um, and we mixed up our defensive slot, second slides. We, we didn't change our first slide, our hot, but we changed mm -hmm. our second slide to try to keep them guessing a little bit. And, um, and so, you know, we were able to, you know, it, it worked well today. <laughs> I'll just I was going to ask, defensively, you said it, you know, usually comes on a lot stronger at the end of the season. Do you feel like y'all are kind of starting to play that NCAA tournament level defense? That, that's the idea, right? You know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just in the ACC, holding somebody, you know, to single digits is a really big deal. Like, I mean, I thought we played well defensively last week and Syracuse had 12 goals. You know, just this league, the, the firepower. And the slickness and the stick work, it, it, it's, it's just really difficult. I mean, if we'd held, if Notre Dame gotten two more goals today, I'd still be like, we played great defense today. Um, and so, yeah, we are. It's, and, and like, yeah, you and I have talked about this before. Our defense is a little more complex. It takes a little longer to learn. And, and we do start to gel as we get in from April into May. And Connor got that first goal against Lafayette. It looked like he woke something up. Mm -hmm. Does he? Does he seem different? Just he seemed more aggressive, more comfortable today. Yeah. Is he that? Is, is he, there something different, or do you just kind of was like you know? He's just healthy. Yeah. yeah he, he's been banged up yeah. Yeah. enough to play. Obviously, he didn't play against Carolina, but yeah. he's getting to the point where he's really, really starting to get comfortable. Um, it was interesting today. I thought Chris Fake did a really nice job with him. Connor looked tired. Yeah. You know, at the end of the game there, and um, yeah. you know it's. It, it was an exhausting day. It was a, an emotional game, you know, being senior day and all that. But yeah, we uh, we're gonna we got two weeks now, and we have to. What's our identity? What, what's our objectives for these couple weeks? I learned this from Bronco. You know, when he's getting ready for a bowl game, it's like, all right, what's important? Yeah. Uh, getting getting more physically fit is uh, is certainly one of those things that uh, that'll be we'll emphasized. And I think I saw at least two from Mitchell Whalen, maybe another from Solidaire Chismart. You've got guys that will literally secret service that ball, jump in front of stuff. What does that mean? You as a defensive coach, like. 
That's the buy-in, right? That's. I know. So it's a sellout. I know. It's a little startling sometimes <laughs> I what mean, they're doing. <laughs> sell, throwing on, they don't have that chest protector or that <laughs> throat protector like Matt Nunes has. It's um, it's a testament to this group of men how much they care about each other and, and how much they love each other. And yeah, it is. It's a little startling what they do. But yeah, some of the gutsy performances of Chismar and Mitch Whalen who are giving you every ounce they have. Those are two guys who walked onto our program. Yeah. You know, are playing huge roles for us. And did uh, did Xander give you any guff for calling that timeout or the? The oh no! Game, the, no, the, the, the guy. The guys know, you know. Yeah. Hey, look. Sometimes I, I felt like a majority of the game we would, if we picked up a ball, Notre Dame was chopping yeah. us and picking it yeah. up themselves. Usually in the other end of the field because yeah. the Cavanaughs are so good with the way they ride. I was like, you know what? I hate third quarter timeouts. I'm like the anti anti third quarter timeout guy. I called it. Yeah. You know. Some hours in, in some hot water. It was a lot of hot water. I know. <laughs> so. uh I was just upset with Xander taking that shot with a goalie and a goal with up five, you know, with two and a half minutes left. Like, empty net, fine. We'll throw in the, we'll throw in the empty net, but not, not with a goalie and a goal. Just kill the clock. Yeah. You don't want empty net for the record, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've beaten Notre Dame twice. Pretty convincingly, you've lost to Duke twice. I know it's out of your hands, but who, who's the best team in the nation? Yeah, that's a really good question, and that, that's the selection committee. We've just made their, their jobs a little trickier, haven't we? Um, they're going to have to see how these uh, these this week will have slight influences, right? Your your opponent's opponent strength to schedule, your opponent's strength to schedule, and all that. But yeah, they're going to have their they're going to have their hands full trying to figure this one out. You know, who did put one, who did put two, and three? That's uh, you know, uh, the, the the three of us have certainly proven uh, ourselves to be really really strong teams this year. But yeah, it's going to be tricky. We'll find that out in, in a week from today. So you don't really answer who you put one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm I, I'm actually on a committee that's evaluating yeah. all the work, and uh, you know, it's 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 going to be a toss up because you you do follow the numbers to a point, but the, right now the selection committee can sort of value like, all right, let's look at big wins, like looks at bad losses, and how much mm -hmm. do they want to factor that in? So, give you know, I wouldn't want their job. I like assessing and evaluating the system, but not making those decisions. <laughs> Take a couple more, unless everybody's good. We're good. Three goals.